What's up everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Dr. Shawna Missy Me, and I help students optimize their medical school application to increase their chances of being accepted into medical school. And in today's video, we are continuing our three-part series where I talk about what I wish I knew before starting medical school. This is part two. If you missed part one of this series, be sure to check out that video. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button to be sure you don't miss a video. So in part one, I'll talk to you guys about things that I wish I knew about studying, some resources, habits that I should have developed. In this particular video, I'm gonna talk about the demands of medical school, which is a super broad topic, but I wanted to at least highlight a few of them that I feel like is important for you guys to know. And honestly, there's no way to really get you guys to appreciate the demand until you're like in it. Once you're in it, then you really, then you really understand what people mean when they say medical school is like drinking water from a fire hydrant versus college is like drinking water from a water fountain. And some people wouldn't even say drinking water from an ocean, you know? <laughs> and you'd be like, gosh, like that's such a huge comparison but it really is that different. So let's go ahead and get to number one. As you guys know, the volume of information that you have to learn is insane and literally out of this world. And you have to learn it quickly, okay? You learn so much and you take an exam six to eight weeks or four to eight weeks after that. And it's so much, you feel like that's everything you should learn for the entire year versus just a little four week or eight week block. So like I heard that before I started medical school, but I did not appreciate it until I was actually in it. So my job and my goal is to stress to you guys just how demanding it is, okay? And because there's such a huge volume of material to learn, you have to study all the time. I'm sure there are many medical students out there currently and i know some of my friends that i met in medical school if they took even a day or two days off from studying they were so behind and had to cram for the exam so it took me maybe six weeks or so to realize just how much time i needed to put into studying and that included before class whatever i learned in class and after school um, and sometimes on the weekends. I try my best to study throughout the week and give myself at least one day off, but there are some times where I just could not do that. So understanding the volume and the demand uh, will help you ask yourself, like, am I really ready for the sacrifice? Because that's what it comes down to. Like, will you do what you need to do in order to pass and do well on exams? Obviously, it's, it's, it's doable because people are doing it. I've done it. I got through it by the grace of God but it is definitely something that you have to consider if you are not the strongest in academics, if you are not disciplined, if you're not really determined. And you know, this really goes into a whole other topic like is medicine for you, which I'm gonna do a video on and I'm gonna share some things that you should really ask yourself and do a lot of self-reflection before you choose to go down that path. But back to the point, um, <laughs> The volume is insane. The amount of time you have to study is insane. Like I remember not being able to participate in some things because I had to study or I would have to leave holiday gatherings early or not attend at all because I had to study, you know, and even talking on the phone with friends or with family, you know, I can't have a drawn out conversation because this is cutting into my study time. Like, you know, it was just that serious. And to be honest with you guys, like you can, and, and most of you will have a social life in medical school. It is just dramatically reduced compared to um, college. And don't let these 99th percentile uh, medical students tell you that, oh, all you need to do is do this. No, that's all the geniuses need to do. If you are an average medical student that makes average grades and things like that, understand that you might have to put in a little bit more time and effort to be able to keep up with the rest or to even just maintain being average. Number two on my list goes back to what I said in part one about being able to retain all the information uh, and skills that you're learning while in medical school. It is so crucial. Um, and I think for me, like I really didn't understand how learning the basic clinical exam findings and really, really been able to pick up on murmurs or anything, things like that. Like I knew that I had to get it obviously because you need to know how to diagnose patients. Being able to see x-rays over and over and 
do hard exams over and over like the more you do the more you remember and i think for me um i definitely should have like went around my family and just listened to everyone's chest listen to everyone's lungs their heart pull up you know uh chest x-rays online even if it's something that's not really relevant to whatever i'm learning about at the time just to kind of keep yourself familiarized and i didn't do those things because i didn't have to right i did it when i had to just to, to take the exam or to blah 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 but if i didn't have to i prioritized all my time to doing what i had to do at that time and i wish i would have spent more time just recycling ultrasound images chest x-ray images ct scans understanding the difference between x-ray ct and mri and what you will see or won't see and why this uh, modality is the most effective for this diagnosis things like that like i really wish i would have spent more time doing that and the problem is is that um you know if you see it once or twice or even by the third time you feel like you really really understand it and you get it but if you don't keep looking at it if you don't keep familiarizing yourself you are going to forget it so it's not that you don't understand it it's not that you don't comprehend it it's more so that you don't remember it that is the problem and that's that is one of the huge demands of medical school is having to retain as much information as you can number three is understanding how crucial support is during your medical school journey now i really didn't think about this going into medical school i just happened to be accepted into a medical school that was near my hometown which is in houston texas so i was near family by default which turned out to be awesome and great for me because anytime i needed to just kind of de-stress and relax i was able to just drive home meet up with friends meet up with family have fun and just get my mind off of all things med school right um so it worked out for me but it's not something that i actually thought about and considered before applying to medical school a lot of you guys who are looking to apply to medical schools that are out of state i highly suggest looking at medical schools that are near your family or at least friends or maybe you have some pre-med friends who are also applying to the same medical schools because there will come a time where you will need to de-stress relax go have fun get your mind off of things in order to be able to continue this journey because this is literally what medical school looks like i mean it is literally a roller coaster you have your highs you have your lows and you're gonna need that family support that friend support mentors there to help you along the way even if it's just to distract you for a couple of hours out of your day so definitely recommend setting yourself up in a position to where you will have access to support when you need it even small things like having a meal prepared you know for you sometimes or being able to just kind of go home and just binge watch series with you know with your parents or with your siblings or things like that like it really is a, a, a sort of wellness for you even if we don't see it as that i think before you start medical school you're like who cares about you know uh having a meal prepared i'll just eat a hot pocket or cereal something like that but when you're like super stressed and you're running out of time and you come home to an empty refrigerator or to a dirty house or to dirty laundry it really does add just that little ounce of stress on top of everything else and it can make or break your day so it really is huge to make sure you have a good support system before starting medical school number four on my list is competition and guys it is real and you know i hopefully with step one going to pass fail um hopefully it's not as competitive but honestly i really don't know how that's gonna go because i feel like if we don't have step one to kind of weed out or distribute the strong uh between the weak <laughs> you know not trying to be mean but it is what it is the strong between the weak um students i really don't know what what's gonna change or what's gonna happen that's gonna continue to create that difference or that divide so that residency programs know which students they want to um accept um so i don't know but either way it goes competition is real i personally know medical students and residents who tell me like you know i was considering this one specialty but then i was told by my colleague that i wouldn't be a good fit because of x y and z or there's no way i'm going to score high enough on my exams in order to get into that specialty you know you will be surprised what people will tell you or what ideas they will plant into your mind to make you think that you're not good enough or to make you think that you can't do what you're trying to do simply because they're trying to do the same thing you know and i personally didn't experience anyone like trying to sabotage uh my exam or you know sending me false information about an exam or things like that 
Um, I didn't experience that, but I can imagine that it does occur sometimes. And you just have to know that like the hate and the jealousy out there is real. And some people don't believe or think that you should be where you are. Depending on who you are, what you look like, where you come from, how you sound. Me personally, you know, of my background, like I don't have the best, I don't always speak professional like this, blah, blah, blah. I, sometimes the country and the slang and all that, it come out and it is what it is, right? But when people hear that, they're, they're comparing you to what they think um, a medical student or a medical professional should be. And so it's really easy to get discouraged and to make you feel like you don't belong or you're not good enough for what you're trying to do. So just know that going in is that, you know, competition is real. Hate and jealousy is everywhere. You just have to stay true to yourself, keep your feet rooted and grounded on what you know and what you know about yourself and keep moving forward. And last but not least, self grace. Okay, and I know you guys probably don't hear that much. Everybody talks about self-care, but I think a huge umbrella under self-care is self-grace. Giving yourself the opportunity to not be so perfect anymore. Understanding that it is okay if you don't do as well as you wanted to do. Like, I think in college or in high school, most of us medical students and residents, and we were like at the top of our class, right? Because we were only being compared to the students that were around us in our community that went to our schools. But when you get to medical school, everybody is top notch. Everybody is elite. Everybody can and does typically perform well. So you may quickly go from here to here in comparison to your medical school colleagues. So it is okay, like you have to understand that you made it to medical school, really all you need to do is pass at the bare minimum just to get out and to continue into your career. Um, now obviously I'm not saying lower your standards or have low expectations of yourself. At the end of the day, being in medical school alone is an accomplishment. There are so many people who are trying to get into medical school who are not successful. So be able to give yourself grace and say, hey, I didn't do it how I wanted to do it this time. I did not perform up to my expectations. I know I can do better. I'm gonna let this one go, take that L, and then focus on the next thing so that you can get a W, right? So make sure you give yourself self grace. Give yourself time to adjust. Give yourself time to reflect and say, you know what, this isn't working and that's okay. Or even say, you know what, my day is completely ruined. I'm gonna go to bed and I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna start fresh the next morning. You know, give yourself that grace. It is super important. I mean, it's one of the biggest things about self-care. Like if you can do anything for yourself is to take it easy on yourself and not beat yourself up so much. So I hope that this was helpful. Again, this was part two of a three part series. Be on the lookout for part three to be released next week. If you guys have any comments, questions, definitely comment below, hit me up on Instagram. And like I said in my previous video, the best way to contact me right now is email if you have any direct questions or are interested in setting up a pop-up call with me. Hope this was helpful. You guys have a good day.